on everybody it is thursday may 24th and we have just a disaster of a slate going on today uh depending on which site you play on you might see only three games on the main slate thanks FanDuel, for that um we're not gonna have a ton to talk about we'll probably get through this pretty quickly so uh jake did you enjoy game seven yesterday <laughs> oh yeah it was it was good um it was good to see the Capitals sort of surprise everyone. So I was happy about the outcome. I mean, I wouldn't have been mad if Tampa won, but I'm really excited for the Stanley Cup Finals. It's going to be awesome. It starts Monday, so get ready for that. It's going to be really fun. There you go. Uh, Celtics took down the Cavs, so now that we've got our uh, other sports talk out of the way, let's take a look at this dreadful, dreadful sleep. Thursdays, not the most fun in uh, MLB DFS. Drafting no, it's not. four games, FanDuel three games. I don't. It's like whatever. It's like playing a short <laughs> slate. Um, we're gonna just talk about the main slate, and uh, that's it. So we'll be in and out real quick. First one: Astros and Indians. This is only for the DraftKings peeps because FanDuel hates people. Uh, Astros, 4.1 run implied total. Indians, 3.7. 54% chance to win for the Astros. Charlie Morton going for Houston. Uh, Mike Clevenger going for Cleveland. Uh, Charlie Morton will probably hit something close to like my ownership caps on DraftKings. Uh, it's hard to avoid him. And right now, the Astros would be not even on my list for DraftKings, apparently. Didn't include the 6 o'clock. Astros would be my number one stack on DK for the for the main slate. So, Jake, how much do you like the Astros? Um, I'm not crazy about the Astros. I really respect Clevenger, especially against righties. So, like, you can make a case for stacking pretty much anyone on the slate. And I do like some of the, the lefties against Clevenger, like Gonzalez and McCann. And Tony Kemp, like, I guess he's just got huge upside coming right up from the minors. Um, so I kind of like the bottom of the order if I'm stacking the Astros. I just think the top is going to be too um, too highly owned for going up against a pitcher that's really good against righties. Um, so I'm probably going to be below the field on the Astros. I'll have some Clevenger. And then I like Morton a lot. Uh, you're not really getting a huge discount, 11-4 on DraftKings. But he just started at home against the Indians, struck out eight and seven innings, one earned run. Uh, he's got a 43% K rate against lefties, in the uh, which is second in the MLB. And like, have you seen like just the leaders in, against or strikeout percentage against lefties? It goes Garrett Cole, Charlie Morton, Justin Verlander. Wow. <laughs> so all Astros. So maybe Bauer's on to something that they're. Uh, they're juicing the ball or something because that is ridiculous. Three right-handed pitchers going 40% K against lefties. That's um, crazy. Yeah, so I just wanted to mention that. But it, it's not going to be an easy matchup by any stretch for Morton. But um, he should be able to get strikeouts against the bottom of that order for sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, Astros look like they're just going to pop up a ton for me. Um <laughs> first four in particular not that that's super surprising uh anybody could look at this and be like yeah i really like springer Bregman, altuve and correa um i'm not really uh taking any major stances there i did get a lot of brian mccann again not that that surprises me you need to have a catcher and uh there's only eight options basically mm -hmm. well thanks to the astros playing evan gaddis as a dh <laughs> um yeah you get an extra catcher what a weird dude. You don't see his sort of profile every day where he still gets the catcher eligibility. But, like, by all accounts, he's not a catcher. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. He's, he's not Doesn't he DH either. every... He DHs, right? Uh, I assume that he has caught once this year, if I had to guess. I'm pulling it up now. Uh, he's caught twice. Well, nice. He's caught, he's caught four innings per this, <laughs> and he caught in 49 games last year. So, like, 
by all accounts, the dude is just a DH. There's yeah. just, DraftKings doesn't have a choice. That's the way right, where you, you have to slot him somewhere. And... Yeah. Um, so I'm, ultimately, I'll end up with a bunch of Astros, and I expect them to be pretty popular. Um, yeah, like I think they're going to be... Sexy names of the slate. Yeah, I think they're just going to be a little bit too popular for me. Um, so I'll be underweight on them. I did get quite a bit of Lindor, though, which I'm not really sure how I feel about it. Obviously, I like him, and obviously, he's really good. Uh, it concerns me that I'm going to get too much of a one-off guy um, that's kind of expensive. But I'm not surprised that it happened. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind Lindor or Jose Ramirez or Brantley, really, as one-offs against Morton. I'm, I'm not going to go out of my way to stag against him. If you just like look at his game logs, he he doesn't really get blown up ever. At least this season, gave up four earned in four innings. That was his worst start, but that's not really enough for to get you there for a stack. Yeah, uh, so I got twenty seven percent Lindor, and then like half of that for Brantley and Ramirez. So we're on the same page with what we would do with the Indians. I yeah, I don't see them as like a perfectly viable stack. And I got a, a little bit of Clevenger, but you're going to get a little bit of just about everybody. When there's mm-hmm. only four games. Um, yep. But I think Morton will be a guy I have quite a bit. Uh, the guy we're about to talk about now will be the guy that is, I would assume, the most popular guy of the slate. So we'll see. Red Sox, unless you have more here. No, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Red Sox and Rays. Uh, now we're on uh, both sites. Red Sox, 3.8 run implied total. Rays, 3.3. It's a 57% chance to win for the Red Sox. Rick Porcello going for Boston. Blake Sell. Yeah, Blake Sell. Blake Snell going for the Rays. Blake Bye. Blake Bye. <laughs> uh, for me, at least. There you, that's the worst joke ever. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, though. Um, I'll have both of these guys in abundance on both sites. Uh, Snell's price is just too low for his talent level. And. Porcello is just going to be owned because he's good and the Rays' offense is super not good. They have no one from Steamer projected above 100 in weighted runs created plus. Zero. No one above average is what they're telling us here. Um, Shockingly, shockingly terrible. So pitching is going to rule the roost here, although Red Sox stacks, I would guess, will be pretty popular um, just because of the Red Sox. And there's a ton of upside there. What are you looking yeah. at? I know you're you're Blake buying here today. I'm I'm Blake buying here. Um, it's just too low of a price, and I don't think he's going to be super super he- uh, heavily owned, relatively for a four game slate. So, like, if you had to guess his ownership right now, would you say like over under thirty on DraftKings? Like, is that is that a good number thirty? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's probably going to be over because okay. you don't have many options for pairing. So, like, you'd have to assume it's going to be Snell plus one of Morton or Purcello, right? Yeah, I mean, I think Morton or Purcello is going to be how most people start their builds. And maybe they maybe you can fit in both of them. I'm, I'm sure you can. And then there's going to be some Clevenger, some Duffy, some Davies. Um so, I don't know. I mean, Snell against the Red Sox? I'd say 35 to 40 is probably kind of likely. Uh, I mean, I'm, because of his price point. Yeah. Yeah, I'm comfortable with that then because 8K for this guy, he's been awesome. Uh, and then the Red Sox aren't even that bad of a matchup against lefties. They're actually pretty good. They have a bottom three WRC plus. They're bottom five in Woba, bottom five in on base percentage. Um, and that's all against left handed pitchers. I still don't I, get that. I don't know. It's. It's probably that bottom of the lineup with Devers and Eduardo Nunez doesn't hit lefties that well. Um, I think Sandy Leone, I know he hits one side really well and the other not so well. So He's really good against lefties. Okay. Um, so it, it doesn't really make sense with J.D. and Hanley. I know Ben Benintendi was very bad against lefties last year. Yeah, he gets a Almost 9, unplayable. 9% reduction in Woba. Yeah. Yeah, he was... I remember he was awful last year against lefties. Like, I would skip over him every time when I would stack the Red Sox. Um, 
But Snell, he's got a 25% K rate against righties, and he's not even getting blown up. He's got a 1.21 whip against righties. Hard contact is about average. Um, so I'm on Snell. I'll have a ton of him, and I'm not all that scared besides Mookie Betts and J.D. Martinez. Uh, I'm with you. Uh, I'll have a bunch of Snell. I'm not getting to really any raise bats, which is a testament to how crazy low that total is. That even on on FanDuel, where there's only six options, and I'm still barely getting any rays. I'll be under yeah, the field there pretty much by default. Uh, I'll have a lot of bets. I'll have a lot of Hanley, JD, and Bogarts. Uh, Bogarts in particular, um, I think, is a guy that looks pretty good today. At least on DK, but there's a lot of really quality shortstop options going on this weirdly small slate. Yeah, I, I mean, I have and no problem. Door Correa, like that's... You're getting a lot there. Yeah, I have no problem with Bogarts either. So I forgot to mention him. But Bogarts, JD, and, and Betts, I think, all have a chance to hit Snell very well. Um, but I'm way more on the Snell side than I am the Red Sox bats. So that's... I agree with you there. Uh, Red Sox are my fourth most owned stack on both sites. Like, that's pretty low for their offense on a four-game slate. So I would yeah. have expected them to be higher than that, just kind of based on their pedigree. But that low implied total, man, it's uh, it's keeping the Red Sox in check. Yeah, I mean, and then Porcello. So, I mean, you have to like him here against the Rays, despite that price. He's just been solid, and the Rays are they're an okay matchup. I don't think they're a great matchup. Uh, probably a little better now without Ramos in the lineup. If he's not going to be in there, do you have him projected to be in? Because I, I, I do. I have him in a okay. four hole. Because he hurt his thumb um, or like his wrist, so I don't really want to mess around with him that much. He had to leave the game two nights ago. Um, <laughs> so, I, so I googled him to see if there was any news, and then the first article is an article about Faria going to the DL, and then the second one is the headline from D Rays Bay, which I believe is the SB Nation. Uh, Ray's blog, if it's not SB Nation, apologies. And uh, the headline is Jacob Far Jacob Faria and Wilson Ramos both injured in same miserable inning. Yeah. Oh, it was <laughs> it was disgusting. Like they that was the Mookie Betts home run to Faria gave up. Trainers come out, they're like seeing him warm up. He throws one pitch, winces, leaves the game. <clears throat> Reliever comes in, Ramos digs for a ball in the dirt. It, Comes up, hits off the plate, hits him in the thumb. And then uh, CJ Cron ran into the wall and almost hurt his leg right after that. And they gave up like four runs in the inning. It wasn't great for the Rays. <laughs> and then they had to face Chris Sale for the next six innings. So Yeah, that's a really good headline, man. <laughs> Shout out to D-Rays Bay. Yeah, that was, that's good. Uh, so yeah, so I, like, I don't know if he's playing or not. Yeah. I'll say this um, much. It won't matter. I mean, I just don't want to mess with a guy who's got a thumb injury as far as hitting goes. Um, so if you had to pick some raised bats, for me, it would be Cron, Wendell, and Brad Miller if you want to get some raised stacks in there, which I don't think is a terrible idea, especially if Porcello is going to be heavily owned. Um, those would be the guys I would go with, but... I mean, I'll have a sprinkle of them. I'm not going head over heels for the race stack. Yeah, I would probably just look at, like, Spawn on FanDuel 2800 just because he's leading off. Hope for the best. Mm -hmm. uh, fuck, this team is bad. Brad, yeah, Brad so Miller, bad. I guess, 2300 on FanDuel. Like, that's worth a flyer. Honestly. It seems like always on these short slates, though. It's like the chalk pitcher gets blown up, Ray's and then like nine today. Yeah, Ray's stack goes nuts, and like the the nut lineup is like three K left over on the table. Guys like Malik Smith hits two home runs with a yeah. projected one hundred ISO. That's why that's why it's always nice to just play the ownership game, just fade most of the chalk, and just embrace the variance of baseball. 
I might just fade the entire damn slate. <laughs> Save my that house. might be the best play. Yeah. Uh, I got nothing else here. Um, yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're getting into the stacks now where I, I'm going to have a bunch of people, so at least we'll have something to talk about. Yeah. Royals and Rangers. Uh, this one I don't think has a total yet. I could be wrong. Yeah, no. This one doesn't have a total or a... Like, it's got nothing. So everything that that's I'm about to talk about is going to be made up here. I think it's because Bibbins Dirks, they don't know if he's starting for sure. He's not confirmed. Yeah. I've got Royals 4.2, Rangers 4.3, Rangers 51% chance to win. That might be too... I, I, I can't get a feel for it because... Both of their offenses aren't good. So I don't want to give them too much additional credit for having shitty pitching. But anyway, let's just say that it's close to a coin flip. That's where Fangraphs had it. So I'll at least use that sort of logic. Danny Duffy going for the Royals. Austin Bibbins Dirks going for Texas, allegedly. Uh, he does not, he's not even rosterable on FanDuel. Not that it matters. Um, I like Danny Duffy quite a bit here. Uh, especially at 4,300 on this slate. I think that he'll be relatively popular to fill out some lines. Uh, unless I'm wildly, wildly wrong and the Rangers end up as a, a much bigger favorite. If this is anywhere close to a coin flip game, I think Danny Duffy's worth a peak. I think he's worth more than a peak, and I hate Danny Duffy. So 4,300. I hate Danny Duffy. I mean, I like stacking against. I I can't remember the last time. I think I played him 2015 when he had that really good stretch. So I was on him a little bit then, but if it was 2015 or 2016, I don't remember. But since then, actually, he won me a GPP back in the day. Uh, so actually, I don't hate you, Danny Duffy. You're you're not all that bad. Um, but I, I mean, I wanted to stack against him. Just like okay, Texas weather. Rangers, probably cheap bats. And then I looked, and it's just a bunch of lefties in here with Gallo, Dor, Mazzara, Chu. Those guys swing and miss so much. And it's not like Duffy can't miss bats from time to time. Yeah. So it is risky. Anytime you're in this park, a uh, couple hard hit balls, and you've given up four runs all of a sudden, um, especially when it's 90 degrees. So it, it's not like a safe play by any means, but for 4,300, you could talk me into some Duffy for sure. And I don't mind him with Morton or Snell actually at all. Yeah, I'll end up with uh, quite a bit of Duffy on both sites. Unless this line moves and it's like Rangers 4.9, Royals 3.9 or something crazy. But I don't get the sense that that's going to happen. Um, too many landmines in the Rangers lineup. So I like the Royals bats too at this spot. Uh, they're my number two stack on both sites. I got to like a ton of the meat of their order. So Soler, Mustakis, uh, Salvador Perez, Whit Merrifield, they're all going to have tons of ownership for me. Uh, quite a bit of John Jay too, which uh, I hate, but you, know, you can't just, you can't only get guys you like on a day like today. Right. It's, it's slim pickings here. There's not even a stack that I'm super crazy about. I mean, I do really like one in the next game, but like the Royals will end up on my teams just out of like just by default. Mustakis against Bibbins Durst. Bibbins Durst cannot miss any bats. That's what I'm getting on him. Um, like everything says he should not be able to make any of these Royals miss. The Royals don't really miss anyways. So. I like all the way down through Alex Gordon in the sixth spot. I like one through six for the Royals a ton. So they're probably my second or third favorite stack. Yeah, um, I'm with you there. I even get a little bit of Dozier and Escobar on FanDuel. Uh, but that two, three, four, five chunk is going to be a spot where I have an overwhelming amount of ownership. And I actually like the Rangers quite a bit on FanDuel. Uh, they're super duper cheap. You know, DeShield is a guy that pops up a lot for me. I think that um, leadoff hitters take carry a little bit of extra weight <clears throat> on short slates just because For sure. uh, there's less opportunities to go around. So he's someone that I'll look at quite a bit. Uh, Falefa, I'm going to look at quite a bit. Profar will be very popular for me on FanDuel. 
Uh, Ranger is actually my fifth most owned stack on FanDuel. So fifth of six. They're last, but they're still fifth. Yeah, Falefa has actually been okay. He was really awesome last night. He had 28 DK points. Um, man, so I don't mind a Ranger stack. Like, it sounds like we're recommending everyone, but you kind of have to at least consider all these stacks just because... I mean, There's I so so I'm few options. Everyone but the Rays. Yeah, and I and I sort of touched on the Rays bats that I like. So, um, whatever. I mean, I don't like I the Rangers rarely... on DK as as a hitting option. Yeah, I mean, I like Falefa. Um, so, if you just want a home run hunt, Gallo. Hope that Duffy makes a mistake, and then I like Robinson Chirinos, but those guys are all super spread out. So it's gonna be tough for me to get to a, a Rangers stack. Yeah, uh, they'll be they'll be my second <clears throat> least owned stack. I don't know how else to say that. Um, I want to touch on it since it's not on the slate, but did you see the Gleyber Torres homered again? Yeah. <laughs> Dude is just mashing right now. But yeah, keep him in the nine hole. Yeah. Love it. That's whatever. Like He's just going to smash 30 home runs from the nine hole this year, I guess. Final game, Mets and Brewers. Mets, 3.9 run implied total. Brewers, 4.6. It's a 58% chance to win for the Brewers. Steven Matz going for New York. Zach Davies going for Milwaukee. Uh, I got to a lot of Zach Davies on DK. Not as much on FanDuel. His price is a little bit higher. Um, and then uh, the Brewers are my number one stack on FanDuel, number three on DK. I uh, like them quite a bit from the hitting side. Where are you at on the pitching here? Because the Brewers have been really bad against lefties, but I feel like yeah. something's got to give here. Yeah, that's they shouldn't be. They're kind of like the Red Sox. I don't think they should be bad against lefties, um, like with Aguilar and Ryan. Is Ryan Braun back for this game? I have him in, yeah. I thought he was on the 10-day DL, like, eight days ago, but maybe I'm misremembering. But if he's in the lineup, I, I love Braun against a lefty anytime, pretty much, especially a fraud like Steven Matz. Um, I love Kane and even Yelich, Hernan Perez, Aguilar, Pena. Brewers are my favorite stack. Um, I just love stacking against Matz, who he doesn't, he's got like a really bad O swing percentage on the year, 17.5, 7.6% swinging strike rate doesn't really do anything special and his strikeout numbers were super inflated and they're regressing a little bit and I expect them to regress even more. So Brewers, a team with a ton of power, they should hit lefties well. Um, I'll take my chances against what I think is a below average lefty. Yeah, uh, this on FanDuel at least, Brewers and Mets, my first and third most popular stack right now. So this is going to be a game where I have a lot of hitting. Um, where do I, let's see, Brewers are third on DK, Mets are fifth, so I'm not super wild about the Mets on DraftKings. But, like, Wilmer Flores <coughs> looks really good on both sites, really nice price. Jay Bruce looks pretty good on both sites. Cabrera looks good on both sites. Those three guys are kind of transcending it all. But I'm going to end up with a ton of those top four guys at Brewers. Yeah, I mean, Davies is nothing special either. I'd rather use Davies over Mats. I think that Davies could be okay here for 6,100. I'm not expecting, like, 20 points out of him, and I wouldn't be if you're playing him, but he can limit hard contact well enough that he can survive this start. Um, on a normal slate, I wouldn't even look at Davies just because he doesn't have big strikeout upside, but... Um, on a normal yeah. slate, I wouldn't look at Davies tonight. I'm going to have him 25 percent of the time, probably. <laughs> yeah, I think that's I think that's fair, uh, but I am worried about Estrella Cabrera and Jay Bruce and Conforto and even Nimmo. Um, so, I mean, I I like a little bit of both sides of it. No strong takes either way. No, I hear you. <clears throat> um, one guy I do want to point out, and I just because it's so weird, but I got a like a whole lot of Orlando Arcia on Fanduel. $2,100 shortstop. Um, because the Brewers stack is so popular, that brings him along. 
And uh, at that price point on this sort of short slate, I don't mind spending only $2,100 on a shortstop if they have the highest implied total of the day. Yeah, that's not bad at all. If With the platoon old, split. I would guess he'd be relatively low owned for the slate. Yeah, it's not like he's a terrible hitter either. He doesn't really hit for power, but you don't really need someone to hit for power for 2100 Very true. All right, let's look at a couple DK crunches because uh, they should look weird. I only have one big stack for each of them, so you're going to see a lot of high-end bats. Give me two pitchers. Um, Morton Snell. Those, those are the two spotlight pitchers. Morton and Snell. Royals stacked with some scattered good dudes. There, okay, so let's. This one is probably a decent peak. Astro stack with Odor and DeShields, John Jay and Salvador Perez. I don't like that at all. Eh, I mean, I I don't really like the the Rangers part of it, but <clears throat> Astro stack with Estrubal Cabrera, Jay Bruce, DeShields, and Ryan Braun is one that I would say looks pretty nice. Yeah, I love Braun. If he is set to return today, so uh, I love him against the lefty. Hopefully, healthy. It is a back injury, so I, I mean, I don't expect him to hit three homers, but he's one of the best hitters like of all time. Right, uh, lefty righty matchups. Uh, there, this is a good one. Um, it, Hernan Perez, Yelich, Orlando Arcia, Gaddis, Altuve, Bregman, Springer, Wilmer Flores. Uh, I think that's the one I've liked the most out of everything I've seen here. It's just, you're not going to love every piece of your line today. It's no. Not one of those days. No. And you, uh, so I ran 150 lines. There are no Morton Porcello lines, which doesn't necessarily really? shock me. Yeah. I wonder if you can get to it at all. I'm sure you can. You can. You may not be able to get a huge stack in there. If I do Porcello and Morton, let's just do 20 lines. <clears throat> it even works. It might not work with the way that I have this. Oh, it did. Not the worst in the world, I guess. So the number one would be Salvador Ooh. Perez, Moustakis, Alcides Escobar, and John Jay, Wilmer <laughs> Flores, Jay Bruce, Delano De Shields, and Hernan Perez. I mean, I guess that'll be a unique line, that's for sure. Not going to be a lot of Morton Porcello stacks out there. Yeah. Um, I mean, some of the, the top guys, I'm sure Alex will have some. And uh, some guys that differentiate a lot and just worry about pitching sort of later. But, um, yeah, you can definitely do it. That's That's just kind of what I wanted to see. So those two guys will be super popular. Maybe not as much together, but... In general. Yeah. Let me pop open FanDuel quick. Three games, so uh, this isn't going to be like the most appealing <laughs> search through the crunch we'll ever do. Whatever lets this go down. There we go. So if I needed to pick a pitcher on FanDuel, I think Porcello is the guy that I would focus on. I think he's the best sort of combination of everything <clears throat> Yeah, I would end up... God, I really like that second lineup. Arcia, Kane, Braun, Perez, Mookie Betts, Moose Tacos, and Salvador Perez. Odor. That's nice. yeah. you know, Odor, always the threat for a home run. Yeah, uh, I mean, like, Porcello lines can still look really good on FanDuel, so that's why I expect his ownership to be through the roof. Yeah. Especially with a price point $900 below Charlie Morton. Um his Porcello will be by far the highest owned pitcher on FanDuel. I mean, I, I would think so. Just match up against the Rays, decent price, and you've got some really cheap guys that help you do it, like Hernan Perez and Arcia and some other value bats. <clears throat> yep. Low energy, guys. I'm sorry, but uh, this slate sucks. <laughs> it's but really just but still appeal. play it. Yeah, still um, play it. No hockey tonight, I'm sure. Nothing no on Monday. Uh, NBA, we've got 
Game five, Rockets and Warriors. I think. I don't know. The schedule's always weird. Am I right? I think, yeah, Warriors Rockets tonight. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't think there was a day off for that one, the travel change. Um, so check out Spotlight's Hitters, Pitchers, Stacks. Uh, they'll be up once you hear this. Um, check out our new golf content. We've got an article up breaking down uh, the Fort Worth Invitational. Uh, it's called The Approach, so check that out. And, um, I mean, that's basically it. Yeah. Follow Enjoy. Nolan Kelly on uh, Twitter. Go read that golf article. Yeah. New golf writer for uh, awesomeo.com. So check that stuff out. That's all I've got. It's going to be uh, a really uneventful day. Tomorrow will be more fun. Have you looked at the slate for tomorrow yet? I'm sure it's 15 games. That's right. Let's, let's take a look. <clears throat> uh, Cubby's day game and 14. 14 games. So, yeah, we'll have some, we'll have some good talk tomorrow. Yes, we will. Uh, it's up in the air what time a live stream will happen tonight, so pay attention to Twitter. We'll let you guys know if we're doing anything weird today. Uh, with the early start for DraftKings and only three games for FanDuel, it makes it a little wonky, so we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll keep you guys posted. You got anything else you want to add, Jake? No, enjoy these two mini slates. Um, don't go crazy with your bankroll. Yeah. Take a break today, people. Just keep reading our content, but, you know, uh, get, get some fresh air. Have a good yeah. night. Adios, people.